Now I'd like to turn to Tina because I think you have some personal memories perhaps of the Bataan nurses. Um, Carlos, my brother, will be the one to, and then I just have like something short. You'd like Carlos first. to go first. Yeah. Okay, I thought oh. it was ladies first, but I guess <laughs> not today. Okay, Carlos, would you okay, proceed? You. First of all, uh, I'm uh, uh, introduce Carlos Macabali. Uh, my wife, Lena, is with me, uh, and we came from Los Angeles just to share this with you. My sister and uh, my brother-in-law, Francis, from uh, Atlanta, Georgia. We do have a connection here uh, in San Francisco. My daughter and her, her fiancé are Berkeley Law School graduates, <laughs> and Josh just... <laughs> Go Bears. Go Bears. <laughs> <laughs> and Josh just walks uh, stone throw away from here, right? Works. That's where you work at the state attorney general's office. So um, having said that, uh, on beha behalf of our family, I would just like to thank you all very well, very much for uh, presenting this, for we have not heard part of the uh, Filipina nurses, you know, being mentioned in a, as part of the war. So thank you for all this. Thank you for uh, uh, Cecile Gerland. Mm -hmm. In interest of full disclosure, uh, <laughs> she's my kinakapatid. <laughs> <laughs> but I met her for the first time just today. <laughs> uh, her father was my Uncle. godfather. Uncle. Well, my godfather in uh, uh, baptism. Mm -hmm. And I remembered, I think he worked at, uh, he was an officer at Bank of America. Because when I was growing up, my memory was from my Ninong, Ninong Sitong, was a bank book of America. I was like <laughs> five, uh, five years old, and I already had a bank book. <laughs> <laughs> and each year, Around Christmas time, I would look at it to see if it's growing. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, I think that lasted until high school. Then I was big enough to uh, go to, uh, to college. So thank you again. Yeah. So my mother, Adelaida Makabali, she was Garcia then, uh, and my uncle, uh, Guillermo Garcia. So in a family of uh, three siblings, five siblings, uh, five siblings, two of them went to war. And I think that's where um, my uncle and uh, Ninong Sitong uh, got to know each other. So my uncle was in the Air Force, I think. But with the onset of war, the Philippine Air Force the first day was non-functional. They were all wiped out, the, air, the, the so-called airplanes. Um, my mother, and after, well, go be, going back to my uncle, uh, after that, uh, he was in the army. He was in Bata was Bataan, and um, he served there until uh, after Bataan surrendered. I think he joined the guerrilla forces. Now. My mother, on the other hand, was one of those nurses from St. Luke's that you talk about. It's interesting, it now makes sense to me, because my mother used to say, uh, well, let, uh, let me back up first. Um, so she was 21 years old when she graduated from St. Luke's. And she got her first job at Philippine General Hospital around September and she was there barely a month when they started calling her to recruit her to, be, uh, uh, to serve as a civilian nurse at, uh, with the U.S. Army Nurse Corps. Mm -hmm. So they were not in the military, but well, were civilians. And um, so she always used to tell me that, um, because I asked her, why is it that uh, they, they were, uh, they, that you were 
being asked to, to serve them, to join the military, and she said that they preferred St. Luke nursing graduates because of their, uh, the curriculum which you mentioned is a pattern after the American curriculum. So uh, now it makes sense to me when she used to tell me that. So around September, she was just barely a month at PGH when they started to call her. And uh, after several calls, she finally signed up and uh, joined the US, US Army Nurse Corps as a civilian. Um, immediately, her first assignment was at Corregidor. At, uh, there was a Fort Mills Hospital, I think, um, before the war uh, at Corregidor, and she spent two months over there. Uh, she was there from uh, October, November, and then on the early part of December, she was transferred to Manila. Uh, she was at Fort William McKinley and uh, rotated, I think she mentioned, Stotzenberg and Stern, uh, Sternberg Hospital. hospitals. And then uh, the same day that Pearl Harbor was bombed, the Philippines also was bombed. And after that, she was rotated to wherever she was needed. And eventually, around December 24, Christmas Eve, she mentions this, uh, as the war was getting uh, worse and the Allied forces were being forced to retreat to the Bataan Peninsula, uh, her group was tracked to Bataan to establish uh, a field nurse, a field hospital, actually two field hospitals over there. When you, when you say hospital, it's just cots on the ground. There's no roof. The jungle was the roof. And so it's not uncommon, I hear here uh, all the time, that people uh, got malaria, got beriberi, or vitamin malnutrition. So my mother worked there, and eventually she also contracted malaria and uh, malnutrition. She, in one of her biodata, she said that she mentioned that she was about 110 pounds when she, when she uh, joined the U.S. Army Nurse Corps. After they were released from prison, she was just 90 pounds. But they kept working day or night. And one of her memories that she, see, the, the, th the thing is my mother never, I was born after the war. And to me, she was a civilian. She had another life. So being at the war was not something that I uh, think of when, my, when, when I think of my mother. Uh, to me, she was a mother, um, and, but she, she made a point that uh, she kept her, I think it's true with all military veterans, they don't talk about their experience much after the war. They just go on with their life, and which is basically what my mother did. So when I grew up, I just remembered her. She was a nurse, and uh, she worked for the Department of Health and uh, continued on uh, her career with the government. Uh, that's my mother, and I think, <laughs> and my father on their 50th. Uh, is it 50th? Uh, In Los Angeles. So those, <laughs> those were her medals. Anyway. Uh, so they were in Bataan, and uh, they were working there, but eventually, on the eve before Bataan was to surrender, they... Uh, they were in Corregidor, in Fort Mills Tunnel Hospital. No, oh. before ba uh, Bataan surrendered, oh. they were sent over to uh, Corregidor. Oh, okay. the, the nurses were then uh, uh, sent to Corregidor. Mm -hmm. And I was reading, I think, the same article that you mentioned that, uh, she, and my mother me mentioned this, uh, the head nurse, uh, Josie Nesbitt, uh, 
there was mention that on the day of evacuation, the order was only for the U.S. nurses to go to Corregidor, but leave the Filipino nurses uh, in Bataan. So my mother was very thankful that uh, they got to go and was transferred to Bataan, uh, to Corregidor too. So over there, uh, Fort Mills was destroyed by this time, and so uh, they had a makeshift hospital in the Malinta Tunnel. And how many here have been to Malinta Tunnel? Oh, wow. Yes. And you know how hot it is inside, right? So I was there when I was, uh, we had a field trip in high school, and uh, I couldn't last too long inside. I had to get out because it was hot, and Philippines in the summer was very hot. <laughs> 